Hello. My name is Keshwani. It's K E S H W A N R Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the math portion of the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 156. Page 156 and today is our lesson number 56. At the very bottom of the page is the problem that, you, that we are solving. Problem number 6. Problem number 6. It's the same problem, before I forget it, this problem is the exact same problem that appeared that appeared on page 140 of the 10th edition. This book that I'm holding in my hand, which is based on the old format of the GRE, practicing to take the GRE general test 10th edition. If you want to practice, if you want to have, if you want to have more questions to practice on, especially the quantitative comparison questions, this book contains 210 quantitative comparison questions, and I have put together solutions on the YouTube to all 210 questions, quantitative comparison questions. Even though this is not a quantitative comparison questions, but this is where this question comes from, page 140. Do not ask me as to what I intend you to do with that information, I have, I have in the foggiest. Do as you wish with the invaluable information. Anyway, enough said, let's get, let's get going. It says, set S contains all positive integers less than 81. Set S contains, set S contains all positive integers less than 81. They are not equal to the square of an integer. What the hell does it mean? They are not equal to the square of an integer. Well, before we ask, before we answer the question that is being asked, let's first find out. Let's first find all the positive integers. less than 81 that are I'm going to retire this marker, this marker is dying and if I don't throw it away I'm going to keep picking it up excuse me it's gone we shall never hear of it we shall never think of it it ceased to exist Let's first find let's first find all the positive integers less than 81 that are equal to the square of an integer. The very first thing we have to figure out is the language here is a very awkward way, very awkward language, very cumbersome language when they say square of an integer. Let's first find out all the positive integers, all the integers that are that are that are equal to equal to square of an integer. What does it mean for an integer to be a square of an integer? An integer that is a square of an integer is called, let me write it down on the blackboard because this is getting quite philosophical. An integer that happens to be, let me throw this away too, this is no good. An integer that happens to be a square of an integer is 
is simply called a perfect square is called a perfect square we have a name for it for example for example 1 is a perfect square why because 1 happens to be equal to listen carefully because 1 happens to be equal to square of an integer namely itself 1 happens to be square of 1 another integer in this case it's just a, it's just an exception where this other integer happens to be itself 4 is a perfect square because 4 happens to be a square of another integer another integer being 2 4 equals square of 2 9 is a perfect square 16 is a perfect square and you get the idea we're going to make the list of all the positive integers. We're going to make a list of all the positive integers that are less than 81 and are equal to square of other integers. In other words, we're going to make a list of all the perfect square less than 81, which is very simple. We already have to 16. So we have 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49. 64, 81, and 100. Obviously there are 10 perfect square if we go all the way up to 100. 1 square, 2 square, 3 square, so on and so forth, up until 10 squared. But we are asked, we are looking for how many are there, how many positive integers are there that are less than 81. Well, if, if they have to be less than 81, if that's the requirement, then 81 does not count and 100 does not count. There are 8 of them. There are 8 integers. There are 8 positive integers. There are 8 positive integers. There are less than 8, although positive actually doesn't really come into play here. There are 8 integers less than 81 that happen to be perfect square. Or to put it another way, the way they put it in a very awkward way, there are 8 integers less than 81 that happen to be square of other integer. And how many integers are there all together from 1 because we're looking about positive integers so we start with 1 here all the way because 0 is not a positive integer 0 is neither positive nor negative so we start with 1. From 1 to 81 is it 1 to 81? That's what we have to understand. I need the room. I'm going to raise the top part here. I'm going to raise all of this thing. I need the room. Since there are since there are eight since there are eight perfect squares, there are since there are eight integers less than eighty-one that are square of other integers. Therefore, we continue our story here. We continue our story from here. There are. Eight perfect squares that are less than eighty one. Therefore, therefore, this symbol means therefore, therefore, the number. of positive integers I don't like this marker also I just started it and it's dying I don't like it I bought a different brand for some reason I don't know why okay I need the room therefore I'm going to raise this one therefore the number of positive integers less than 81 that are not
perfect squares is simply it's simply 80 minus 8 or 72 80 minus 8 or 72 because there are 8 of them here I need to, you don't need this anymore the reason why the reason why only 32 percent of the people who took the exam the reason why only 32 percent of the people who took the exam got this question right and other 68 percent missed it is not because it involves complicated mathematics there are two reasons. One is the wording, the language that they use, the awkward way in, the, in, in which they phrase the question. And second reason is coming up right now. It is 80 minus 8. There are 8 perfect squares. And it is 80 minus 8. I'm going to make a note here. Don't make a mistake. of putting eighty one here. If you end up putting eighty one here you're gonna end up saying eighty one minus eight. You're gonna end up saying eighty one minus eight eighty one minus eight and you will end up with seventy three. It is eighty minus eight eighty there are eighty positive integers there are less than 81. There are 80 all of them. There are 80 all together that is. And out of those 80, 8 happen to be perfect square. Therefore there are 72 that are not perfect, perfect square. There are not, as they put it, there are not equal to the square of integers. There are 81 minus 8, sorry, I just did it myself. There are 80 minus 8. You see how easy it is? There are 80 minus 8 or 72 integers that are not squares of other integer. Less than 81. And, there, and that's 72. I think I, 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 made a, I made too much fuss about it. So that's what we have in the first column. Column A. Column A, column B, column B, they give you 72. Column A is this part right here. I'm going to circle it one more time. If I can find on the red marker, right here. Eighty minus eight, that's your column A. Eighty minus eight, which is 72, and therefore the answer is C. That's all. Sometimes I do not know when to quit. I don't know how much to explain because I, I ask myself, should I just leave it the way it is where somebody might find it very simple. But then the question is, if that were the case, if that were the case, I'm speaking hypothetically now, if that were the case, then vast majority of people, almost 60%, almost 70% of people would not have missed this question. So there is something in it that's tripping them off. There is something in it that is causing trouble for people. So that's why I took my time. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow on day number 57 where we'll start the question that you see on the top of the page number 157 which is also a tricky question. I'm going to show you how to solve that questions without having to apply a formula. I hate solving problems where I have to memorize formula. Simple formula is one thing. Everybody, you have to know the formula for, uh, for the area of a circle and you have to know how to find out the circumference and you have to know how to figure out the area of a square. Those are simple formulas. But I'm not going to sit there and memorize a bloody formula for a permutation or a combination. We're going to learn tomorrow how to solve that question, the next question on page 157, without a formula, just by using pure, simple logic. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.